Good afternoon. Over recent years, the issue of gun control has become a very heated topic in our culture and American politics, especially because of horrific mass shootings that have happened, like the Virginia Tech shooting in 2007, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in 2012, or the Fort Hood shooting in 2014. The term gun control usually refers to the great debate over whether or not the government should institute controls over gun purchases and ownership, as well as the purchase and ownership of gun-related supplies like ammunition and rifle clips. The shootings have encouraged supporters of gun control to push the legislation to make certain types of guns and gun supplies illegal. Firearms are not for everyone. A good amount of people cannot handle a gun safely, and some even choose to use guns in a horrific way. The government has already passed some laws adjusting the ownership and use of firearms, and more legislation is being considered even at this present moment. Through my research, I have learned that some restrictions of firearms may be needed, but recent legislation banning certain types of firearms is not necessary, and I hope that this presentation will help you see that as well. There are three main points that support the fact that gun, gun control would not be beneficial. The first is that current or past gun control laws have not had any effect on reducing levels of violent crime. The second is that making firearms illegal to all citizens will infringe upon the Second Amendment to the Constitution. The third is that there can be other steps the government can take instead of banning firearms completely. There is a great amount of discussion as to whether or not existing gun laws have distinctly impacted crime rates. In some states where citizens have been allowed to carry concealed weapons, crime rates have been seen to decrease. According to an article written by Gail S. Trotter, states that not with non-discretionary concealed handgun laws have 25% fewer rapes than states that forbid women from carrying concealed handguns. The article also states that there are large drops in overall violent crime, murder, rape, and aggravated assault that begin right after the right to carry laws have gone into effect. These laws that have allowed citizens to legally own concealed weapons have obviously helped lower crime rates. In a different article written by Charles C.W. Cook, many of the mass shootings that have occurred over the years were examined to see whether or not stricter gun control laws would have prevented these tragedies and the conclusion was that they would not have. Criminals do not typically observe any laws, much less gun laws. Criminals who are determined to commit crimes will obtain the guns that they de desire to commit the crimes with through any means at their disposal. The image entitled Gun Control for Dummies also demonstrates that stricter gun laws would not prevent mass shootings because it would restrict law-abiding citizens from defending themselves. In the 2012 Aurora, Colorado theater shootings, it was widely reported that the gunman chose the Cinemark Theater because it was the only theater near him that banned guns on their premises. The shooter in the Aurora killings knew he would not encounter a law-abiding citizen carrying a concealed weapon who might resist him. This article and image makes it extremely clear that enforcing stricter gun laws would leave citizens helpless at the hand of a criminal who has a gun. The Second Amendment clearly gives citizens the right to own guns for their protection and to defend themselves and their property. It reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Gail S. Trotter substantiates the self-defense understanding of the Second Amendment by saying that the Supreme Court has recognized that lawful self-defense is a central component of the Second Amendment's guarantee of the right to keep and bear arms. There have been objections by gun control supporters saying that the Second Amendment was being misinterpreted and that it was only intended for militia and police forces. But in an article from Congressional Digest titled White House Plan to Reduce Gun Violence, President Obama stated that he strongly believes that the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to bear arms. 
It appears that a broad right to gun use and ownership will always remain a central part of American society because it clearly does not make sense to take away these rights from law-abiding citizens. While President Obama believes in the Second Amendment's right to bear arms, he also believes that there are steps to be taken to make communities safer and to protect people from horrific mass shootings. President Obama's administration outlined a set of proposals found in the article from Congressional Digest that they believe should be immediately enacted. The first step in the proposal is to close all of the background check loopholes. They can do this by requiring criminal background checks for all gun sales. In the article from Congressional Digest, it reported that 12% of those who used a gun in a crime acquired it from a retail store or pawn shop where a background check should have been run. Other measures that can be taken to close the loopholes and strengthen the background check system is to require private sellers to sell their firearms through licensed dealers so they could administer a background check and make sure that all potentially dangerous people are prohibited from the possession of firearms. Banning military assault weapons and high capacity magazines, which is an ammunition storage and feeding device within or attached to a firearm, is the second proposal made by President Obama and his administration. To do so, the government must reestablish the ban on assault weapons. The shooters at Virginia Tech Tucson, Oak Creek, and Newton all reportedly used magazines holding more than 10 rounds. This shows that these magazines allow semi-automatic weapons to be used as a tool for mass violence. The next proposal by the President and his administration is to encourage safe gun ownership. One of the things the government wants to do to achieve this is to launch a national responsible gun ownership campaign. The campaign will pr promote common sense gun safety measures like the use of gun safes and trigger locks, separate storage of gun and ammunition, and the reporting of lost and stolen weapons to law enforcement. This campaign, campaign is a wonderful idea to promote safety in handling firearms. It seems that the president recognizes that the vast majority of gun owners in America are responsible citizens who desire for our country to be a safer place. The last proposal made is to create safer school climates. To do this, the government must help 8,000 schools create safer and more nurturing school climates, share the best practices on school discipline, and more nurturing and improve mental health services. The article from Congressional Digest reports that with technical assistance from the Department of Education, 18,000 schools have already put in place evidence-based strategies to improve school climates. Those on both sides of the gun control issue um, agree that increasing school safety and security will have a positive impact on reducing violent crimes committed on school property. Recent violent events in our nation have once again made gun control a highly emotional and debated issue. Banning guns completely will not have an effect on crimes and mass shootings, but rather leave law-abiding citizens defenseless, infringe upon the Second Amendment to the Constitution, and do more harm than good. Society can benefit from firearms when they are in the care of responsible, law-abiding citizens. Those on both sides of the gun control issue seem to agree that the government should take necessary steps to keep citizens safe from criminals, but they must also think about protecting the rights of citizens to own guns in order to keep themselves safe. In order to curb violent crimes against society, crucial steps must be taken so that criminals will not have free access to guns and clearly banning all firearms is not the answer. Thank you.